welcome. Today we are looking at the reasons for the children. 15 reasons why some children born and raised in the church grow up not being born again. Some become like enemies of the church and they keep fighting against the God of their fathers. I pray that God will help us to take lessons seriously and apply what he is teaching us to our lives, to our families, and to our children in Jesus' name. Let's quickly see this. For the children, you know, why is it that some are not born again? One. You see that the sons of Eli, they felt a tightwood to the title and the responsibility of the place. They were not born again. They were not living right. They were children of Belial, as we have seen in 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 22. They committed fornication with the women, and yet they kept offering on the tabernacle and the altar of God. They were polluting it. They have this sense of entitlement. And that's one of the reasons why some children of some pastors, of some bishop, of some ministers, they are in the church, but they are messing up everything on earth. And when they eventually go out, they debase and deny the name of the Lord. Let's see. One, false security. Feeling safe when you are not saved. A child who is not born again, just feeling, I am saved. Why? Because my pastor, my daddy is a pastor. My mommy is a pastor, missus. And so they felt they are saved, even though they are not saved from sin. Listen, children, if you are not saved from sin, you are not saved at all. You may be born by a father that is a bishop, that is an apostle. Even if your father is the founder of that biggest church, as they call it, if you are not saved from sin, you are not saved at all. You are not saved at all. You are exposed to danger just like every other person. Number two reason that some children give. They have this familiarity with pastors and other ministers of God. They feel like Oh, can't you see? The pastor preaching is my father. The other one is my father's friend. They are familiar with the pastors in the church. They are familiar with the servant of God, but they are servant of sin. Familiarity over familiarity with the pastor and with the preacher. Listen, boys and girls, it's not familiarity with God. You can know the pastor without knowing God. You can know the preacher without knowing the God who gave the word that they are preaching. Number three reason. Over familiarity with the word of God heard and read over the years. By that I mean some youths. They have been in the church. They have been in that church for 10 years, 20 years. And so they know all the doctrine. They know all the teaching. They even know all the passage. If you try to read to them, they will quote for you. If you try to read another, they will quote another. That's familiarity, over familiarity with the word of God makes them conclude that they know God. But you may know the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. If you are living in sin, you are a servant of sin. Boys and girls, my, your, pastor, your daddy may be the pastor who has even given you the room to preach in the church. And you know how to preach. You can talk. If you are not born again, you are a servant of Satan. In fact, you are a son of belly. And so, over familiarity is the, with the Bible, with the word of God, is not salvation. Number four, reasons why some children born and raised in the church are not born again. Number four, being injured and sinned again by a supposed man of God. You know, there are some children, they wanted to love the Lord, and they loved the Lord at the point in their life. They were serving God. Maybe we were in children's church, and then somebody offended them. A pastor, a man of God, did something so bad to them. And that anger stayed and lingered to the point that they turned the anger against God. You know what they are doing? And I need to tell you what it is. You are assuming that the sin of the man of God are the sins of God. But that's not true. It is that man that sinned against you, not God. 
Yes, he may be a man of God. That doesn't make him God. So when a man of God sins or does anything against you, please don't count it as the sins of God. I'm taking my time to respond to all this so that you will build your faith on the solid word of God. Number five. What are the reasons why some children born in church, raised in church, are not born again? Overemphasis and overstressing of what is not seen as sin. By that I mean, when some of us that are preaching the gospel, when we label everything as sin, even what, what God did not call sin, we say is sin. What the Bible did not call sin, we say is sin. It now seems to us that to the children, that it's that everything is sin, oh, you sing, is sin. You dance, you sing. You shake, you sing. You are all gay little, you sing. You say that one, you sing. You just get this girl on the road without even touching her, they say it's sin. Everything becomes a sin. When we make everything look like it's sin, you see, the children will grow up hating our kind of way of life. They will grow up hating our kind of doctrine. What the Bible did not call sin, preachers and parents, let's not call those sins sins. But youth, you should know that it is only what the Bible calls sin that is sin. So even if it's your parent or if your pastor that calls something sin, but the Bible didn't call it sin, don't take that against God. Just know that how they are trying to make you to be on the safer side. You too, you understand? God bless you. Now, number six. When we have too many do's, don'ts, and do's by the parents, when there are so many do's and don'ts, so many, don't do this, don't do that, don't do this. We make our children hypocrites. And when we make them hypocrites, when they grow up, all those don'ts don't and do's, they will not go outside and do them properly. Because they will say, I'm not free. You know the way the bird fly when it's released on the cage? That's where they begin to behave. And so parents, don't cage your children. Allow them to be expressive. Don't give them too many do's and don'ts. Yes, we should have rules, but not too many. And don't complicate their life with so many rules. And if you must give them rules, try as much as possible to explain them to them. Let them understand why you are telling them what you are telling them. Let them understand the peculiarities of your conviction and your family. And they will get, abide in Jesus' name. Number seven, reasons why some children born and raised in church are not born again. For the church now. Some of our churches, especially what we call, what some of them call, call holiness churches, holiness Bible church, Kinecon Bible, all those kind of Bible churches. There are too many written and unwritten rules. Because of the too many reasons and unwritten, unwritten rules. Why we have so many laws, law A, law B, you will confuse people. You will make children to pretend. You will make youth to be just be sanctimonious, not really sanctified. They will just be forming that I mean, we are following rules, and in the end, they will grow up to be rebels. So churches, denomination in particular, let's calm down, please. Let's calm down these rules that, that some of them that are not even helpful. Let's and next explain our rules as as much as possible. And not, don't equate your church rule to Bible doctrine. Uh, it is the doctrine of the Bible. Who told you? It? Well, it's just your rule. It's just your way of doing things. The Bible didn't come but It's just you. Sometimes it's a marriage. This is the way it must be. If you don't do this, you go to hell. Who told you? It's just your rule. So please, let's not use our administrative setup and rules and equate it to the commandment of God. It's just our own way of um, maybe ensuring things are done right. So, we should minimize our human rules. Number eight, the reason why some children born and raised in church are not born again, exposure to the secret of the open altar. Exposure to the secret of the open altar. When children are exposed to the secret of the open altar, some of them grow up hating the church. By that I mean, you know, sometimes in the church, some of the children, maybe they are children of pastors, and they get to hear some things about the secret of the leadership of the church, that is the altar. So the altar now becomes like open to them because they've learned some of the secrets, some of the peculiarities, 
some of the weaknesses, or maybe a pastor or something going on, are we the administrative setup of the church? And those knowledge may add in them. When you allow your children to be so used and familiar with the secrets of the pastors and secrets of the church, it can add in unsaved youth. It can also weaken struggling believers. So as much as possible, leaders keep the secret of the church away from your children. Leaders keep the administrative decisions of the church away from your children. And God will help us in Jesus' name. Now the other is to uh, number nine. Bad manners and hypocrisy of some church leaders. This is a major reason why some children that were born and raised in the church become stubborn and heady. When some leaders behave in a bad way, you preach holiness, but your life is against holiness. You preach love, but your life is contrary to love. When we have bad manners, and when we are hypocritical, we say children should do something, but we are doing contrary. We say they should come to church by 10 o'clock, and we'll be the one coming by 10.30. That kind of bad example can add in youth. If you want to lead youth and lead them right, you lead from the front, not from the back. You show them the example. You tell them to do, but show them how to do it by doing it yourself. And so we should not have bad manners or hypocrisy. The bad manners and hypocrisy of some church leaders have made their children and made some of the children of the leaders and the family to misbehave. And then some of them will just say, oh, he's not a man of God. If man of God can do it, then I see this God that is really and that is not true. The sin of the man of God is not the sin of God. Number 10. Ungodly lifestyle and bad behavior of Christian parents. Again, this speaks to parents in general. Parents should live a godly life. If not, if you live a life contrary to what we have been taught in the church, you only confuse your children. You see, it's easy for a, a, a child who is born by somebody that is not born again, somebody that doesn't go to church, somebody that doesn't fear God. That child will know that oh, my parent doesn't claim to know. They doesn't claim to. They don't claim to be godly, and so I know they are not example for me. But you, as a Christian parent, if your life does not portray Christian life, then you are obviously showing to your child that okay, Christianity is a scam, because you are supposed to be a good example. Or by your life, you confuse them. That's how we say, if Christian parents live contrary to what the Bible teaches, you will confuse your children. Ungodly lifestyle and bad behavior of Christian parents. Number 11. Engaging in Christian service without genuine service. And some of us as parents will still guilty of this. The child that is not born again will force them into the choir. Children choir, youth choir, and all that. And you yourself as a child, you know you are not born again, and they tell you to go and be singing. Can't you say, no, daddy, I'm not, I still need to pray more. And you are living in sin, you are singing in the choir. You are living in sin, you are helping them in the work in the church. And that activity that you are engaging in can add in you. And just make you feel, ah, this is this Christian service now, I'm also saved. And you are just wasting your time. If you are sinning, and you are serving in the church, you are still a servant of sin. You have no way to go to accept you repent. Number 12. False accusation, unfair criticism, and condemnation by church leaders and parents. False accusation, unfair criticism, and condemnation by church leaders and parents. You see, when we condemn our children wrongly, we accuse them. We are unfair on them. We criticize them. Sometimes it's the leaders in the church that drive away people from church because of their character and their, their words or the parent themselves. Don't condemn what God does. God didn't condemn. And children, if somebody condemned you and you know God is not condemning you, the Bible didn't condemn you, listen, no matter who condemned you, it doesn't matter. It is God's commendation that matters. Is that okay? So don't say because of what they did and you want to run out. Don't run out. Stay. God will keep you in Jesus' name. Now, the other is number 13. Deception from online preachers, false prophets, and apostates, apostles. You see, there are some preachers on Facebook, on WhatsApp, on YouTube. They have a full-time ministry to teach hell. They are apostles of hell. And they, they just tell call themselves out of apostles. They are teaching people that they can commit masturbation and still be a Christian. 
They are teaching people they can be telling lies. They are, they are covered by grace. They are teaching people that won't save forever save. All those servants of sinner, Satan, ministers of the devil, they are all over the internet and they are deceiving some youth. They are deceiving for some children. Children, if you have been deceived by any preacher telling you that it doesn't matter, you can be sinning and be a Christian, please come out oh, because that is a devil's agent. The Bible says he that committed sin is of the devil. First John chapter 3, verse 8 and 9, you'll see it there. And so you cannot be a child of God and be sinning. Whoever told you that a sinner is a child of God himself is a slave of sin. And so don't allow those false preachers as they are that are deceiving people. They will not deceive you in Jesus' name. Number 14. Subtle atheism resulting from negative life experiences. Subtle atheism resulting from negative life experiences. By that I mean, you know, sir, some of you, because of the bad experiences you have had in your family, children, youth, and so you conclude that God is dead. If my daddy can be sick and die, God is dead. If my mommy can be sick and die, God is dead. If I can have this accident, God is dead. If this can happen to me, this bad thing, God is dead. And that conclusion, based on your personal experience, can be terrible. I want you to know that God is good. I want you to know that God is here. I know I want you to also know that whatever happens to you, God is with you. God is sovereign. So sometimes He allows things that are not so easy for us to bear. Even when God allows what is painful, I want you to know God will see you too. It may be painful, but it will make your story sweet again. You know, bitterness will turn to sweetness. The water of Mara was bitter. But when Moses called upon God, he turned to sweetness. You can pray. When you have difficult circumstances, instead of developing an adding art and be questioning God, God, where are you? God, what are you doing? Don't question God. Trust God and submit to Him. If you allow that thing that is painful, trust God. It will bring out something much better. Yes, somebody may have died and you may not be able to replace the person. But it will build a fence of people around you. People that will be more than angels to you, just like angels. And they will take care of you. God will watch over you. So please don't become an atheist because of a bad experience. God will answer our prayers. And when he doesn't seem to have answered, he answered in the negative sometimes. But he knows how to work things out in the end. That negative situation you'll find yourself now, I pray God will turn you to good in Jesus' name. Number 15, the last before we pray, is Satan's war against Christian family and the church. By this I mean, you see, your parents may be the best of parents, they have even, maybe they have been wrong before and they have apologized to you, but because Satan wants to use you to fight against the family, and so he's allowing you to be hiding as a child. Or maybe you yourself, you just don't know why you are behaving the way you are behaving, and the devil just occupies your mind. You, you can repent. It's not too late for you. You know, the Bible said, God is not willing that any should perish, but that you should come to repentance. You cannot free yourself from the bondage of sin, but God can free you. And there is a power in the blood of Jesus. And I'm asking that that power of the blood will reach out to you today. The war of the devil against any family dear, wanting to use the parents to add in you, or wanting to, to use you, to destroy your family. That spirit of the devil will be destroyed. The power of God will be released upon your life today. And you will be totally delivered in Jesus' name. I pray for every child who wants to come back to God. They have seen that there are reasons they could hold against God and hold against their children. But no matter how tenable those reasons seem to be before man, before you almighty God, they are not tenable. Before you, Almighty God, they are not acceptable. Because it is appointed unto man to die once, and after that is the judgment. Oh Lord, I pray for these youth and boys that maybe for any reason, misbehavior of their parents, or whatever they got themselves into, they are living in sin, and they know it is sin. And they want to save you. I'm asking for them, Lord, you will deliver their souls today in the name of Jesus. The power of God that breaks the yoke of sin. 
release upon them in the name of Jesus. Save the souls of this youth. Make them to serve you and let their family have joy again. For parents, there will be a total repair in the family and your divine power will visit every family. Thank you, O Lord, for in Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Amen. God bless you. I want you to know as youth, if you have turned to the Lord, the Lord has received you. And as parents, as you are believing and trusting God for the transformation of your children, the Lord will answer you. There will be divine intervention, and our children, born and raised in the Lord, born and raised in the church, the local assembly day, will not become vagabond. They will not become idiots. They will not die in sin. They will not fall into sin. They will not be prey of the devil. Together, we will rejoice in the Lord. And in the end, we will make it to all. God bless you.